It's the Bush League Mud Show. It's the Bush League Mud Show. Let's go. Are you ready? Make some noise! Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is going on? Another edition of the Bush League Mud Show. Slade. PJ. Back at you uh, February 25th. Giving you a rundown of some news and tidbits of the week. And then we're also going to run down uh, this week's shows for WWE SmackDown and Rampage. And... PJ, a uh, week in which there was a not a release, mm-hmm. no firings, no no future endeavor. I mean, well, there was a future endeavor, but not in the way that they have been doing it in WWE in terms of, hey, budget cuts, pal. Yep. This seemed like a mutual departure for WWE and Cesaro. We'll touch on that here in just a moment. Be sure to like and subscribe. Wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, and also hit us up. Follow us on social media at Bush League MS Pod. Promise we'll follow right back. Cesaro, no longer with WWE after 11 years of all the people. Wouldn't think he would be one to leave after being with the company for so long. And this was confusing to some because the reports were last year was that he had re-upped with the company, which was potentially why, Mm -hmm. you know, the angle with Roman Reigns over the universal title. Um, but then we're finding out he never did. And according to reports, he had been talking to some people backstage about potentially parting ways back in October because they hadn't had a new deal worked out. Now, um, he was originally scheduled to be on this past Friday's Hershey, Pennsylvania Smackdown. Uh, however, those plans have been nixed. He is free to immediately sign with any promotion as well. So this was just a matter of contract running out. They couldn't come to terms on anything. Yeah. They made an offer. It wasn't like they wanted him to go. They made an offer, and he declined. And, you know, they kind of probably, I'm sure, had their limit in terms of what they were willing to spend on him. And so they agreed to disagree. They part ways. They shake hands. And one of the most well-liked people yeah. backstage yeah. by by everyone. And, mm-hmm. and, hell, I mean, we've seen Cesaro at one point. I feel like on just about everybody's YouTube yes. or Twitch yeah. you know, yes. channel. So uh, clearly respected, well-liked. Um, now, the company, they have re-signed Owens. They signed Styles reportedly uh, to big money deals. They just were unable to uh, do the same for Cesaro. So um, your thoughts on Cesaro no longer being with the company, and we we should have kind of known that something was up after he wasn't in the Rumble. Yeah. Which apparently he was there. really disappointed about. Yeah, I could see that. They didn't feature him there. Um, you know, they made the whole big deal last year at Mania. He's never won a match. They put him in that program with Rollins. Gets gets a hell of a win. Rollins gave him a nod to after the release this week and showed that airplane spin he did with no hands in that match as a a tribute to him. I know Becky Lynch was on there giving a tribute to yeah, well liked guy. Um, Just again, unfortunately, I it's the creative was always shit for him. They they had really had nothing. Was always hot cold, hot cold. Yeah, yeah. It would be good, then not, and not so much. I mean, the bar I guess would be his most successful thing. In the WWE, I, I mean that that's yeah, when they, he actually won a tag team championship with him and Sheamus, and yeah. you got to credit Mick Foley for that because Mick actually, you know, not just on screen but behind scenes, from what I understand, was the one that said, "Hey, we got to put these two together." Yes, 2011 was when they signed him. Of course, a lot of us remember him as being Claudio in Ring of Honor. He was there for a long time. He won the inaugural. Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal at WrestleMania 30, if that means anything to anyone. Uh, Former United States Tag Team Champ and was even at one point was a Heyman guy. They had him paired up with Heyman for a little bit. Um, But singles pushes, anytime he got one, it quickly flamed out. So um, now, of course, you know how this goes. Everyone's always uh, (laughs) excited to speculate on where he might be next as of right now. There's no word on if AEW or New Japan or Impact or anyone has reached out to him about uh, being a part of the promotion. So we shall see. Yeah, and that's you know that's a key thing there. Everyone assumes AEW. I I don't know. Maybe he wants to go back home, spend a little time at home, and then come back. He maybe, didn't burn any bridges. So, maybe this I mean, was a roundabout way of making a trade between the promotions. 
I've seen that conspiracy as well. No, it's Cody not. for Cesaro. Oh, jeez. Well, okay. <laughs> but, you know, he didn't burn any bridges there from what we understand, so I would not be surprised down the road we see him back there again, like maybe the Rumble appearance or, or something like that. So I don't think he's gone forever, but for now – He's he's out of there on his own will, and he gets to go wherever he wants. So one of the things that everyone noticed at the Elimination Chamber, that was the off-script entrance of Brock Lesnar into yes. the match. Now, uh, PWI Insider reported originally that Lesnar had, quote, went off script when he broke through his Elimination Chamber pot. And the latest Wrestling Observer newsletter, Dave Meltzer, stated that since Lashley had been taken out of the match... Lesnar was supposed to wait another couple of minutes until his pod opened, but instead he chose to break through and enter the match early. Mm -hmm. Uh, Meltzer also stated that Lesnar, uh, he knew that Lashley was never, ever going to be entering the match anyways, but because uh, he did not know that they were going to signal for Lashley's pod to open instead of his own, he figured that uh, he was the next person. Yes. Now, um... More into it, and this is a, a heads-up thing by Lesnar, and it shows that even though people may have their thoughts on how nonchalant of an approach towards the business Lesnar is, according to this, Lesnar also knew that the company was running low on time for the event because mm-hmm. they had a hard out on when they needed to be off the air. So he thought that it was a mistake that his pot never opened to begin with, yeah. so that's when he yeah. made the decision, the executive decision, <laughs> if you will, to just say, fuck it. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, and you originally talked about this, and shit happens like that. I mean, it happens TV, like folks. that, and it made sense, though, too. Now, uh, Jim Cornette made a good point on his podcast. I heard this, uh, that he said, you know, if it was planned, they would have had the cameras right there for WWE. If they didn't have those cameras right there. All of a sudden, they say, Brock's beating the shit out of his pod. Then they got a guy over there. So it was not planned. And it was a heads up move by him because why, yeah, why have him just sit there for another two damn minutes and wait or whatever the hell it would be to come in? Come in, get the hell out. That's what it is, especially with the Saudi show. A lot of those guys, we know, just get the damn show done and, and get, get the, the hell, hell back out. home. Yeah. So, I mean, Brock's the perfect guy to wrap up a show like that. He came in, F5, 1, 2, 3, everyone, get out the hell out of here. And, uh, yeah, it was heads up move because he didn't need to wait around another two minutes for that. Kudos to Theory again for taking that damn yes. F5 off the pot. Yeah. Yeah, some people, too, were like, well, the company must be down on him. No. Not if he's doing a move like that and he's taking a finisher from the top guy, the company. Uh, theory is still in the good graces. Well, I'm going to touch on that here in, in a bit because there are a few different things that w- one thing we saw in SmackDown, and in my head I'm tying it together. and Maybe this is the direction that we're heading towards Mania as it pertains okay. to Austin Theory. I'll, I'll, right. I'll come to you on that theory here in a moment, but – uh, during a, uh, a recent PW Torch audio show, Wade Keller, he was discussing the news about AJ Styles recently signing a new WWE contract. And it said that at this point, Styles is pretty much WWE for life yeah. from here on out. I mean, he it will be a like guy, yeah. kind of like the Shawn Michaels. He'll, he'll, he'll just be in, in the good graces like that. Uh, the deal is said to be very lucrative. And Keller also reported that many wrestlers in WWE are making multi-million dollars per year. Yep. Um, and besides Styles, it's it's said that uh, Zayn and Kevin Owens are also getting some big-time money deals. But uh, here is the, the list, apparently, the top paid stars in the company. Styles' deal is reportedly $3 million per year. Okay. Um, I could see that with the AJ Styles. Yeah. Dave Meltzer reported in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter that his pay would put him in the top echelon of the top paid stars. Now, on that list, that includes Lesnar, Reigns, which that was reported those two made the most money last year of anyone on the roster, so that's not a shock, right? Ronda Rousey, that's not a shock, right? To bring her back, she's a name, she's an instant draw. Okay. Becky's got to be up there. Yep. Um, Not on this list. Maybe that's the next contract for Becky. Randy Orton. Now, this doesn't have any merchandising or anything. This is just base talent fee. Right. Okay. Edge. Goldberg. Okay. The Miz. 
Are the Saudi shows in this? <laughs> that's my guess. Is doesn't why this specify. Is I'm going to guess that's what's throwing these numbers off. Because, again, Becky couldn't participate in any of those Saudi shows. Ronda just came back, so she just got the new contract. So that's why that's probably updated. So, I mean, I guess I could see some of these names up here, but I think that's the, that's the deal with this is if some of that Saudi money's in there, that might be throwing figures off. Um, a guy who, based on his workload from – the last year and a half, you would think that Drew McIntyre, I'm, I don't really know the status of his contract, but you would think that he definitely deserves a raise. Yes. Um, he worked more matches than any other person in the promotion last year, and um, he had took some time off to heal up a neck injury and um, used – Well, three weeks. I mean, well, it wasn't a whole hell of a lot of time they gave him. Well, because he wanted to get back for Mania. Yeah, which it looks like. Yeah, it looks like. Uh, That's hey, here, like, here's your yeah. gift for Mania: Baron Corbin. Corbin. Yeah, you went from being in one of the headline matches mm-hmm. last year to Baron Corbin. That's no disrespect well, to Corbin because they've done him a disservice. Out for the for the uh, main event for the longest time that Drew might have been involved in the Reigns Lesnar main event because he had issues yeah. with both guys. But yeah, that yeah. that ain't happening. Drew McIntyre reportedly is uh, to work more WWE events basically than originally planned. And it's also being uh, reported that he uh, – the original plan for him was to only work pay-per-views and do safe matches on TV leading up to Mania. However, uh, McIntyre now uh, scheduled a team with Big E and Kofi against the Bloodline at a few weekend house show events. Uh, and okay. I, I want to say this weekend, actually, Youngstown and Rochester – New York. So, and then we saw him on SmackDown earlier tonight yep. again with Matt Cat Moss yes. and Baron Corbin. So, <laughs> a lot of neck jokes in there too. <laughs> yeah. So, um, big news that came out of some of the big news that came out of SmackDown. Vince McMahon announced <laughs> for a rare yes media appearance yeah and this is gonna be interesting how the hell he's gonna he will be this. on yeah. the pat mcafee show yes and this was announced and uh yeah it was announced during smackdown Mc- mcmahon is gonna be the special guest on pat mcafee show next thursday uh in and studio in studio yeah there's so there's no word on when Vince's interview uh, will begin in terms of the in terms of the time, but well, I guess he's on I think around eleven, and so. it'll get thrown the internet immediately, anyways. Yes. Um. So McAfee is obviously very excited. People are wondering, well, what you know? Okay, of all the shows, and he's done some some shows. Whenever Vince has talked to people yep. before, it's been the biggest of the names: the Howard Stearns, the Bob Costas, even yep. though he was pissed at Bob. Yep. Uh, Michael Lansbury out of can you know yep. these Stone guys. Cold's podcast, Stone even Cold though po- it was a network. Yes, Stone Cold's it was the podcast. first time he was really on a podcast. Yeah. So I was wondering why why the Pat McAfee show, and I'm I'm just curious. Yeah, I'm just well, curious. I'm gonna guess because he's an employee. Well, I'm gonna guess because reportedly Pat McAfee is scheduled for a WrestleMania 38 feud, according to reports. Oh, a, we're gonna have set up an angle, maybe a big angle. Reportedly scheduled for Pat McAfee for WrestleMania 38, so he's scheduled to. Um, be involved in in this feud, according to Ringside News, which has confirmed a recent report making the rounds. So there's no word yet on who it'll be with. Oh, I kind of. Th- okay. But I'm guessing, is this how we squeeze and give Austin yes. Theory something to do? Maybe. Does Austin Theory come on the show? I'm going to assume Vince will be the main event of the Pat McAfee show. He will come on last. This is how yep. we end the show. Austin Theory will jump Pat McAfee. You heard it here first. Out okay. of my mouth, you heard it here first. Austin Theory will invade. So you think he gets Vince all riled up and that gets him all pissed off in the interview or something like that? I th- I think so. I think yeah. there, there's – Vince wouldn't just – he's doing yeah. it for an obvious reason. And at this point, hearing his voice and he's – even though he still keeps himself physically in great shape, mm-hmm. the mother nature's starting to kind of take over a few little things here and there from Vince. So I don't know how long the interview, quote unquote, yeah. is scheduled to, how long it's going to be for. I wouldn't expect him to go an hour with Pat, but I do expect it to maybe be 10 to 15 minutes, and Austin Theory runs out, 
and attacks Pat McAfee. We'll and and in scene, that's how we go off air on Thursday on the Pat McAfee show. Maybe. We'll see. I know he's done it with Adam Cole in the past to set up that angle and that match at NXT. So, I mean, he's got history of doing it. Well, let's we'll see. I mean, if the big angle is. And they actually did a good job with that. What are we doing with Stone Cold? That's Pat's favorite guy. I mean, are we teaming now? Or, or I mean, that's the thing. That's what I'm trying to figure out. You're thinking Owens, Austin Theory versus uh, Pat McAfee, Pat McAfee and, and Stone Cold. Maybe that's where we're going. I have no idea, but I'm just throwing things out at the wind right now because these Stone Cold reports now are just, I, I don't know. We thought it was going to be Owens. Now this tag team thing has got things convoluted a little bit. This Madison Square Garden Is that show. how you have to book Austin at this point? It would be a tag match so he doesn't have to. Well, I guess now because, like I said, my theory's out the window that he'd be <laughs> no like a headliner. Intended. Yeah, because they already announced Rousey and Charlotte for Saturday night. So we'll, uh, we'll just wait and see, I guess, with all this. So Thursday we'll have to tune in to see if Austin Theory uh, steals <laughs> an egg or a microphone or some shit or he jumps them. Maybe that's what Austin Theory should do, steal his microphone. Steal, well, Brock's got some headphones launched up still in his state, his uh, rafters there when he walked out the other day. That was pretty kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, WWE and AE, I almost said AEW, yeah. A&E. They teased some big news to be announced soon. Many have speculated. More biographies. Uh, well, up, that's yeah. well, according to PW Insider, the news is supposed to include a new season of A&E's Biography WWE Legends with no word yet on which legends will be featured for the show. Uh, well, the first season gave us Austin, Michaels, Ultimate Warrior, uh, Macho Man, Randy Savage, and I feel like I'm missing maybe one or two more potentially. Booker T was one of them. Yes, Booker T. Yeah. So uh, Savage and Booker T. Yeah. And maybe we might be leaving one out. I mean, they were. Uh, but. Well, Austin was. We mentioned that. Yes. I think he kicked off the season with that one. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to assume that Degeneration X might be one of them. Yeah. Because according to JR, Jim Ross on the Grilling JR podcast, he revealed that he had been contacted by AE to do some commentary for a documentary on Degeneration X. Okay. So um, he's uh, been involved in several WWE a and E documentaries so far, and he mm -hmm. stated that he won't do the show unless he's interested. And he was a big part. I mean, he was there. This is yeah. right the the, yep. the meat, the wheelhouse of when Jim Ross was in charge of talent relations. He was part of the booking mm -hmm. and part of that whole process of getting Michaels and Triple H and China and uh, yeah. later on, you know, yeah. X Pac and New Age Outlaws getting that whole thing together. So. I'm just going to assume that's probably one of them. Yeah, I would have to think so. And it did good ratings last year, too, for A&E. I mean, it, it opened up some things, and people that weren't normally wrestling fans tuned in and just remembered, you know, things, you know, weren't, right, you know, tuning into the current product and everything, remembered that and got a little nostalgia pop. So, yeah, I could see where, you yeah, know, we'll try another season of it here. Yeah. WWE SmackDown. They were, uh, this was a sold out Hershey. That crowd was, was rocking. Yeah, they were rocking. They were ready. Mania Apparently, there were, here. Uh, as of noon today, earlier today, there was only literally two tickets left for that <laughs> show. So they sold very well in Hershey. Yeah, and they represent pretty good on TV. They were, they were ready to go. Um, this was basically headlined by, and, and I'll tell you why. I thought that it was well done, mm -hmm. but I didn't see the purpose of doing what this whole theme was supposed to be in terms of Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns with the contract signing. Okay. These two were the finalized terms of their champion versus champion match at WrestleMania, which during the verbiage of Paul Heyman's promo, this has now been officially labeled as a unification match instead of title for title. Yep. So we're merging the belts. And My question to you is, with this winner-take-all unification match, one champ, will we use the approach of merging the brands more, where you see everybody on both shows, or just, I'm a big fan of just a traveling champ going back and forth. Brock's 
appearances, his contract, traveling. Right now, this is a... Well, Brock's done after Mania. He ain't yes. winning this match. He's not I'm winning sorry, this folks, match. Ro- Ro- Roman yeah. Reigns has got to yeah. be winning this. Yeah, yeah. the dates are running out. He you can actually... I'm, like, I'm really loving happy, smiley Brock. Yeah, the dates are running out. But he's and... really going to be smiling when he can go back to the farm yes, in Saskatchewan. Exactly. So I, I do think it's a traveling champ. I don't think everything's going to get merged. But, of course, after WrestleMania, they always have the big night after, and they yeah. do all kinds of weird shit, and which isn't a draft, but then they change brands and whatever the hell. But I think it will be leading to the top guy will be doing double duty. They'll be going, or group. If and Roman can actually line. make those shows. Yeah. Yeah, and I the mean, networks, no matter who wins this match, yeah. the networks are going to want. They want the top star they want on the top. both shows because from what I'm understanding, they're both kind of like, uh, we want the top guy on our show. We're paying a lot of money. And, and it gets rid of yeah. your issue that they always run into, naturally so. One of the belts eventually, when, you're, when you've got two world champs, one of those belts is going to have a thin – roster in terms of contenders gunning for it yeah it gets pretty thin but i think a lot of people are going to bitch and moan though now because there's only one belt and not a lot of people that they think are going to get opportunities are going to get those opportunities it's just going to be the same old guy i think of anyways if anything it gets the creative team to get back to the drawing board on okay how can we tell sufficient good stories for people to become contenders you would think that one champ would somewhat just bog down some of that 50-50 booking. Yeah, it should. And winning money in the bank would actually mean something. It, it hasn't in the last couple of years. So now, Correct. yeah, those opportunities, if you're just chasing one belt, it's you know yeah. it's a bigger thing. So if they stick to that, I think that would be a positive thing for them. So with this segment, we get the world champs sitting across from one another for this closing segment, contract signing for WrestleMania. Lesnar insisted that he alone, not WWE security, was responsible for Reigns and Heyman's health. And uh, the WWE champion, he asserted that his patience is a consequence of knowing that he will get paid to beat both Roman Reigns and (laughs) And the the dick, dick. (laughs) Paul Heyman's ass at WrestleMania 38. (laughs) Heyman insisted that Lesnar is... Not going to make it to WrestleMania as champion. This is not going to be a title-for-title title unification match because he's saying Lesnar is not going to make it there as champ. Now, he's got that MS, MSG show, yes. and Heyman claims that he will be the person that will pick the opponent. Now, it was announced earlier in the day that officially Bobby, Bobby Lashley out. has been taken off marketing for that show. Okay. You pretty much could say he's he's not going to be there, right? No. Shoulder, you got to yeah, clean it up. Yeah. And they're talking up to four months. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Now Bobby Lashley is also a fucking robot, so that too he could he could be uh, back. Who soon. knows? Yep. Who knows? Um. So Heyman throws that out there about the MSG house show on March fifth. Both parties they end up signing the contract. So we got this this match now secured for Mania. Reigns, Heyman, the Usos, they end up departing the ring. Now, this is during a promo that I thought I thought Roman really made this segment. He came across like the absolute final boss heel in a movie where he's the yeah. bad guy. Yeah. Everybody works for, for him. Me. Yep. You don't call the shots. This is yep. my show. Yep. This is my ring. The people in the crowd, these are my people. Well, he started doing the table pushing thing too, which yes. was funny too. Which we was like, hilarious. What the hell's going on? And he's just pushing the table at Adam the Pierce line. is yep. picking stuff up, yes. microphones and stuff yep. off off the mats. Yep. But he, everything is his. Yep. The WrestleMania sign, that's his because he is WrestleMania. The commentary team. Yep. They acknowledge him every week. The crowd, they acknowledge this shit was funny. Yes, it was. The security team. Yeah. They work yep. for me, yep. the cameraman, everybody. They yep. work for me, mm-hmm. especially security team. This is where the security team, they this cure the guard, cue the guard. Mark security team is what yes. I call. Yes. So 
Uh, Lesnar basically takes these guys out. I mean, he just absolutely just looked like a true the beast. The goddamn office chair spot. I feel sorry for the guy that had to take that. Oh, because my he, gosh. Was he, that stiff? It was stiff, and Ooh, I don't know if baby. he got his hands up in time. Boy, was that a stiff <laughs> one. Yeah. When Brock gets objects, he really uses them. <laughs> remember the axe, I remember, from the car that almost the fucking car door that landed in the front row when he threw that, too. Yeah, yeah, so we got tables, we got chairs, we got human bodies flying all over the ring. Of course, this ends with an F5 as the Bloodline and Heyman, they're on the ramp and they're watching in horror as <laughs> Lesnar clears out the ring. Um, here is my thing about the segment, the only thing I have. If Brock has to defend his belt at MSG, and mm-hmm. it's an actual title match on March 5th, why are we doing a contract signing for champion versus champion? Can you explain that to me? Yeah, I think it's more to play into the odds, you know, with Heyman now being the guy to pick that. It's more of a trying to screw Brock over, trying to get some baby face sympathy for Brock, trying to continue to grow that a little bit. Not that the guy needs it, but – Kind of helps him out a little bit because he's been Mr. Heel all this time. So if he odds stack, I haven't heard him, one boo for Brock no, Lesnar since he's been back. No, they love him. And I think it's just it more. clearly establishes yeah, that Roman I, is the heel. Yes. And I think that's what part of this is. It's just, just be a dick and throw more odds against him at that show. Who the hell, you know, Heyman might pick three guys to go against Brock. Oh, who the hell knows what the rules of the match are or whatever, but. He can pick it, and I think that's what they're trying to do is establish a little sympathy for him. All right, let's go ahead and run down what else happened on this show. The show actually opened with um, Ronda Rousey Mm -hmm. coming out, expressing her intentions to be a role model for her baby daughter. This ended up being interrupted as Ronda's in the ring with Michael Cole. Charlotte Flair interrupts the segment, and Sonya Deville from behind – Attacks Ronda. Flair targets the knee as well because DeVille went after the back of the knee, Mm -hmm. which took Ronda down. Charlotte went for it, and they actually – Charlotte bashing the leg around the the ring post. The surgically repaired knee seven times. They made sure to say that on the broadcast because she has had a lot of surgeries Mm -hmm. on that leg, so they were trying to build that part up. Didn't stop Ronda from immediately getting up and yeah, monkey flipping Sonya Deville's yeah. ass. Yeah. So later on the show, because of her abuse of power once again, Adam Pierce informed Sonya Deville that next week on SmackDown there will be a match between her and Ronda Rousey. Okay. You know, I've had an issue lately of Adam Pierce trying to call out the bullshit and abuse of power that Sonya Deville has done when Adam Pierce was just doing this. At three Survivor to six months Star, ago. At Survivor Series when he wanted Team Raw to win. Yeah, I mean, I, yes. I, I don't get that. <laughs> um, We got New Day, Big E, and Kofi coming out on a damn ATV. Early birthday present for Big E. Yes, early birthday present. Los Lotharios, they they beat them. 50-50 bookends we talked about before. Los Lotharios, yeah. they got their win on New Day after being defeated by New Day yeah. the week before, and now New Day gets it back. So, um. Garza got hit with the midnight hour. We got Viking Raiders ambushing the Usos backstage. <laughs> Jimmy Getting them and back from Sweet Saudi. Yes, Jimmy and Jay, they were conducting an interview with Sam Roberts, who I didn't realize was now absolutely completely bald. Yes. And McAfee was getting on him a little bit. He's sitting right when Sam introduced himself, he's like, Oh, good job. Yeah, good so they're job, they're Sam. chatting with Sam about their feud <laughs> as well as the Reigns Lesnar contract signing. So uh a tag team match for the SmackDown tag team titles next week between the Usos and the Viking Raiders. That ended up also being confirmed on this show. We got Zia Lee defeating Natalia <laughs> via pinfall. <laughs> oh, this was yeah. with a crescent kick that I don't even yeah. think was anywhere near this Natalia. Yeah, this whole Kudos thing to Natalia. Was. This yeah. was a yeah, um, yeah. Anyways, I, I mean, as I told you before, I felt like I feel like unfortunately for Zia Lee, when I do see her and they have her coming out with the whole glacier, I think glacier, yes. I think yeah. mid nineties, I mm-hmm. think Monday Night Raw when they were just throwing gimmicks out there, cartoonish yeah. gimmicks. 
I mean, it's one thing to be cartoonish, but this one right here is just not. Like, I really do feel bad for her. Maybe, yeah. you know, I do think she has something to offer, but I think we're kind of overdoing it with the whole, the, well, uh... Well, here's the problem. You have Nikki Ash on the other show that's right. doing the super whole, superhero gimmick. Now you have her doing kind of a Marvel presentation of a superhero, but still it was just... It, it's awkward, like you said. It, it it just doesn't match. No, the WWE jackass relationship apparently clearly not over as no. Johnny Knoxville came out to challenge Sami Zayn for the Intercontinental Title. Knoxville answered Zayn's open challenge, and um, yeah, jackass star. He ate a hell of a kick to his gusto. I was gonna say the first one. It looked like he they they caught they missed it. It completely yeah. missed it or whatever. The second one. Yes, that was stiff as all yeah. hell when he hit that. Here's another rough one. Uh, Sasha Banks, she defeated Shotzi Blackheart yes. via submission after locking up the bank statement. And Shotzi uh, doesn't have a last name anymore. They showed her name as just Shotzi. Yeah, so she's done for. Yeah. Uh, Naomi was on commentary during the match, and uh, it was announced that Banks and Naomi have now joined forces with hopes of capturing the women's tag team title. So that's where we are right yes. now with Sasha Banks. Uh, it was a rough match. Yeah. There was a uh, a part there where Shotzi was trying to slingshot Banks off the ropes, mm-hmm. and just, I mean, it was just yeah. a very awkward, but, you know, hey. And then Drew McIntyre defeating Matt Cat Moss. So uh, in a sub out match because you know Corbin said, "Well, this is a mania type match. We shouldn't be doing it here." So then he subbed himself out. Uh, there you go. That was WWE SmackDown on the AEW. Uh, not really much news in regards to them, so we'll we'll run through it, but yeah. uh, give you, um, let's give you Tony Khan on supposedly him revealing something massive for AEW. And is this just an issue at this point? Should he be extremely careful with constantly coming out to announce big, massive announcements? Yeah. Should been, he just stop? Like, just yeah, show I've it to us. I've been on this for the last year. He should just shut up about it. Now, I know he had the Punk and the Danielson and the Cole things, but then before that, you had Big Show and you had Christian Cage, which were didn't amount to shit. I yeah, I, I'm with you on this. I, I think it's it's time for him to just zip it up and just put it on your show. Put and it let on the show and let surprised. us react. So yes, yes there's a surprise element. So in terms of this, he um is planning to make this big massive announcement during Wednesday's Dynamite episode at Daly's Place. They're gonna be back in Daly's Place. For Jacksonville, Florida. If anything, hopefully it's an announcement of maybe, I don't know, maybe a new TV deal. I don't know. No, it's going to be a but talent of some But this is going to be kind. a talent of yep. some kind. Yeah. So, um, Khan had first revealed on Busted Open Radio last Friday uh, how he'd been working on something pretty big for AEW, and he's calling it massive and something that would be a big deal in pro wrestling. And then uh, it was reported the next day after that that Khan was in meetings all day that Friday, last week that is, trying to put together this massive deal for AEW. So no additional details it's at this time. It's like a New Japan partnership or something like that. Uh, it's I don't know at this point. I mean, really, there's nothing for me to, to read too much in between the lines when it comes to this story. I think more yeah. than anything, it's just I just want to react. I just want to see you yes. just put it on the show yeah. or – I, I, I don't know. Like just I, I just feel Be, that he's we're, we're doing horse. too just, much yes. of the I have an announcement. We got something yep. big coming. Like, yeah. you know, not everything needs to be announced. That's what we get on New York about. We hate when they they just spoil a big surprise coming up Monday or a big comeback or something. They'll do it like a couple hours before the show on their Twitter or Facebook or whatever. Yeah, coming up, so-and-so is going to be there Monday. Well, then that just screws it. We want that natural reaction. A planned match for AEW Revolution most likely postponed due to Ray Phoenix's injury. If you remember, he uh, dislocated his elbow. Thankfully, yeah. that was um, – or was – were they uh, – originally we thought it was a broken arm, but it turned yeah. out it was a dislocation. Yes. It, uh, it turns out tape. also yeah. he's not going to be back in time because the original match for Revolution was going to be the Death Triangle versus House of Black, but that seems to be on hold. Okay. All right. Yeah. Jeff Hardy, he uh, took the Twitter earlier during the day 
with a rare treat or rare tweet about his pro wrestling future. And this was in response to everybody freaking out because there were some viral comments that he made about going to AEW earlier in the week. YouTube creator Jarrett Myers, he was interviewing Hardy at one of his recent concert dates, and Hardy stated that he was going to be going to AEW soon, well, which we maybe all kind of figured. There's Khan's announcement. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he said, quote, I'm going to AEW. This is what Jeff said in the interview that was recorded a couple of days back. He said, I'm so excited until this morning. I didn't really know. Well, so nervous and excited. So um, in an update, Hardy seemed to kind of backtrack on it a little bit in terms of the AEW, but um, probably likely just covering for himself as he's still under the 90-day non-compete yeah, clause. I mean, the it's company. the worst so, kept secret which, out there. Which, honestly, he just should, that should be yeah. done away with it after we be. found out that he yeah. passed his test yes. and that they didn't even give him the results. Yeah. Until like, they didn't have to. the results back before yeah. they made the announcement. Yes. The decision. Yeah. Horrible. Yeah. Horrible. That's Johnny Ace for you. Moving on, Jim Ross, we talked earlier about how he talked about on the Grilling JR podcast that A&E reached out to him about doing a documentary for Degeneration X. Well, Jim Ross's AEW contract is also set to expire soon as well. If you remember everybody when this company started, Everybody, for the most part, did three-year deals. Yep, that's um, right. Yeah. And so did he. So he signed his three-year deal in April of 2019 when he joined the promotion to serve as announcer and senior advisor. And uh, since then, he's, of course, calling the pay-per-view events and majority of the Dynamite episodes long t- alongside Tony Schiavone and Excalibur. So, you know, re-signed and just have him just do special events, that would be Maybe. my thinking for yeah. AEW. Yeah, especially with and a lot he's of things. Jim he's, Ross, so if he yeah. gets the same amount of money, I mean, yep. to do less, I mean, that's fine. Jim Ross has yeah. earned it, and you can have him come back mm-hmm. for the events where there are big matches. matches. Yes. Not just any old pay-per-view, yep. but just, or maybe it'll be uh, just a pay-per-view basis. I don't know. Maybe, And yeah. occasional dynamites. Yeah, I mean, he's got he's had the health scare this year and just other stuff going on. So uh, hopefully, you know, things are all right on that front. But, yeah, he need, if if he is, if he can be like that, and it like you said, he's not part of the like the day-to-day operations, really. He's not in, like, where he was, talent relations no. or anything like that. And they're not – doesn't seem like they're picking his brain a whole right. lot on that. They're – you know, but um, not that I know or anything, but it just sounds like, um, you know, if they do resign him, yeah, the special events contract, premium event contract. I will bring that term over so there. You get too. the taker treatment. Yeah, give, may as well. Yeah. Yeah. AEW Rampage, you ready to run this down? They were in the same spot tonight, like they take the show on the road, Bridgeport, Connecticut, exactly where they had Dynamite just a couple of nights ago. We kick this show off immediately for the uh, TNT title. Sammy Guevara versus Andrade. And no entrances. We went straight on the show. Both guys already in the ring. The bell rings. The action underway within seconds. Guevara ends up taking Andrade down by his legs. Hit some shots before they got back to their feet. Uh, There was a nice exchange with Andrade offering a handshake. Guevara flipped him off. So Guevara's the heel now. So Andrade (laughs) then knocked him on his ass with a shoulder tackle. We got the TNT champion hitting a beautiful Spanish fly out of nowhere for a two count. Guevara uh, then tried to hit a springboard cutter, Uh, but Andrade was able to shove shove him off the top rope into the barricade. We took a break, and we came back from that break, and we see Andrade kicking out of an inside cradle, and uh, Andrade was then in full control until Sammy was able to counter a back suplex and hit a clothesline, and then he called for the GTH but couldn't hit it before Andrade escaped. DDT by Andrade on the apron. That sent Guevara crashing out, and Sammy then recovered and was put on the top rope. He hit a Spanish fly from the top, got the near fall. Uh, While this is going on, we then get Matt Hardy, because he was out there with Private Party at ringside, Hardy, during the match, removed one of the turnbuckle pads while Andrade had the referee distract it. The same Andrade that doesn't want any help during matches, right? He yes. fired Chavo yeah. for this. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Andrade uh, tried to hit a DDT from the top rope, but Sammy was able to trip him, hit the exposed turnbuckle on the way down. Sammy went to the apron, hit the springboard cutter. 
for the win to retain the title. I actually thought it was a pretty good, solid match. Um, after this, we got yes. Andrade and the Money Matt team jumping on Sammy. Now, all of this is going on. Chris Jericho is on commentary. Why we still need Chris Jericho on commentary for Rampage? Strange. Yeah, Very strange. Yeah. No no need for it. But his guy's in the ring being jumped, but it took for Sting and Darby Allin to come down and save him because, of course, we got a Tornado Trios match for Revolution. Well, we remember, Sammy announced on Twitter, not that on he's the show, no longer that he's inter- no longer. So again, but why didn't we do I that on TV? I, I, don't, I have I don't no idea. That. I yeah. don't get that. I don't either. All you can do is try to make sense, right? Yeah. All right, moving forward, we got a match of Nick Camarato and Wardlow. Wardlow um, ended up winning this match, got a powerbomb symphony uh, to get the win. And after the match, Aaron Solo as Spears and Wardlow in the middle of the ring. Spears walks out of the shot. Solo jumps on Wardlow. Wardlow catches him. And gets ready to unleash a, another power bomb. But at this point, Sean Spears decides, I'm going to cock block that. I'm going to take my <laughs> chair. My shine, yep. And I'm going to hit Aaron Solo across the back. It ends up hitting Wartlow in the hands with the chair, in which yeah. you could clearly read Wartlow's lips of, What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Sean Spears gets on the mic and says the Powerbomb Symphony. No more Powerbombs going forward because apparently it's not going over in the eyes of Sean Spears. As the whole crowd is standing up and getting into it. It might be the most over move they have. It might be, yes. Uh, We got a squash match. Serena Deeb in the five-minute rookie challenge. She defeated the 0-2 Kayla Sparks. Moving on. Yes. We got a main event of Anthony Bowens versus Orange Cassidy. This was hard to watch for me. Actually, before that, we got a contract yeah. signing of Britt Baker and Thunder yeah. Rosa, which Britt actually cut a pretty damn good mm-hmm. promo during yeah. this um, after Thunder Rosa made it pretty short and sweet and called her a bitch. <laughs> uh, Britt went into it, and, and they, they keep well, that's going the thing. Everyone the wants lights to be the match. baddest bitch in town, so it's not like it's that, yeah. you know, Hurtful and more. Well, they went on about the lights out match in which they they continue to to tell you that Britt Baker lost the match. But well, remember, you tell me that doesn't I know, count. It doesn't count, and Britt has to, of course, or whatever it let it be known that yeah. she, even though she lost the match, she became the bigger star. She is the face of AEW. So uh, this ended up, they signed the contract, and then Thunder Rosa ended up doing the heel thing of jumping across the table and attacking Britt. She gets attacked by a hater and Rebel, and then uh, we also then get Mercedes Ms. Martinez, Martinez, who comes yeah. out to help her. So end scene there. Main event match, we get... Orange Cassidy, Anthony Bowens. This was a qualifying match for the face of the revolution. We got a backstage seg. I actually enjoyed it. The back and forth between Henry and Orange Cassidy, who talked. Mm -hmm. He spoke. And then uh, the the acclaim, who I thought verbally during the night, they came out the weak link in this whole thing. I I didn't like the freestyle. Uh, The best part was them giving the mic to Orange Cassidy and everyone in preparation of maybe Orange Cassidy hitting a freestyle. But he just mocked it, stayed silent, and said, word to your mother. (laughs) And that was that. Anyways, this match, uh, Cassidy, after uh, avoiding an attack by Max Caster, hit a dropkick on Bowens as the match got started. Wheeler Yuta took Caster out of the ring while Cassidy and Bowens could finally do their business inside the ring. This match eventually gets on the outside of the ring. And uh, Wheeler Yuta ends up being nailed in the face with uh, with that chain wrapped around Max Caster's hand. We came back from the break. Bowens, he's controlling the pace basically for the majority of the match. Uh, But then we got to a point, Cassidy dumps Bowens out of the ring with a back body drop, hit both members of the acclaim with a slingshot crossbody. Started to go on a roll and hit a few signature moves of his. Got a two count. And then we got an appearance out of Danhausen. <laughs> he appears at ringside to keep Caster from attacking Cassidy. This led to uh, OC, Orange Cassidy, hitting the orange punch for the win to earn the spot in the latter match. So there you go. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it was kind of hard to watch because Bowen's the bigger athletic guy. He's got to sell. He's got to take all these spots. He's not going over. I couldn't buy him winning anything because we know that Cassidy was going to be in that match. So it was kind of hard for me to watch that and believe any of it. 
Yeah. Well, that is your AEW review for February 25th. Um, Leave your thoughts, comments on the stories, news tidbits that we talked about also on the shows from earlier tonight, SmackDown and Rampage. We'd love to know what you thought of those. Slade. PJ. With the Bush League Mud Show. Be sure to like, subscribe wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts and follow us on social media. Follow, promise we'll follow right back at Bush League MS Pop. We'll get at you next week.